Miss Grace has hurt her ankle. Miss Grace? Let's just show him that you're a qualified assistant. Without your wrist, I'm gonna check your pulse. Oh, faster than normal. Hello, everyone. You are about to see, about to watch a review of the film Running for Grace, and we describe it. But we um, we thought we would add a little insert here at the top of the video because we neglected one important fact about this movie. One of the producers is Eddie Marshall. And so in our um, desire and excitement or however you put it in our review, we had forgotten to mention that. And so it's especially appropriate, though, because in our interview discussion with Eddie that was released this week, check it out, he mentions what a producer does, one of the many uh, duties of a producer. And it's really fascinating to get you know in deep, uh, to do a little deep dive on the um, behind the scenes work of directors and producers on a film, even an ultra low budget film or a low budget film, and there is a difference. And so uh, it's, so in light of that, it's especially interesting that we, and important that we tell you who one of the producers is. There are many more, but Eddie's a friend of ours, so we thought mm. we, would, we would share that. Uh, any thoughts about the interview with Eddie Marshall? No, I thought it was it was a good interview. I'm glad you mentioned the ultra um, budget, low budget. Uh, low budget, because he does go into it. And we have another interview with another director later on uh, that talks about that. So it's it's nice to uh, uh, hear Eddie's take on it and how difficult it is. So after this episode, I was like, wow. Uh, at the same time, can I just say this with the, with the film that we we reviewed here? Um, I thought it was. I think this is probably the last film he did before he took a break. And I, I just want to say that production value was great. And I, I'll just leave it at that. The production value. And I have to give him kudos to that. In this movie that we yeah. reviewed? Yes, yes, yes. Well, it's a higher budget. Yes. Too. And and you see that go what goes into um, a DP's role and how a right. movie would look and all the all that's available to them uh when you have more money so uh yes so check out this review you're about to watch we hope you enjoy it and um we'll see you next time goodbye welcome to the show everybody today we are discussing a film we do film reviews here and uh Today, we're talking about the 2018 film directed by David L. Cunningham titled Running for Grace. And so Running for Grace is a movie about, I think, an unusual topic that we don't hear a lot about, you know, Hawaii. And it's sort of set in early 20th century Hawaii in a piece of history that I didn't know anything about. So on that level, we learn in this movie. Uh, it's set in... The, I guess the backdrop is Hawaiians and the tension when Europeans and Americans come in and kind of disrupt the place. And haven't we seen that before in other, but not like this, right? Not like this. And um, there's a lot to like about this movie, I want to say, at the outset, including the lead character, lead actor, Matt Dillon. To me, the movie starts with him because his performance, I think, is really good. And so um, even though maybe this material is familiar, but in other settings, uh, the movie stayed with me in the sense of these characters stayed. So uh, Matt Dillon takes in this boy whose parents die, perhaps from sickness or from sickness from these settlers these often racist and so you get a movie about the tension between these groups these hawaiians and these americans europeans and things and so um i don't know you know it's interesting watching matt dillon play this character because i think in the science of casting i'm sure there's a science of casting typically we would put 
Caviezel in the Dylan role, Dylan playing this doctor who takes in this kid whose parents die from these diseases, and he raises this boy. And, you know, Jake, going into this movie, I didn't think this was a teaching movie, but in a way, it sort of ends up being a teaching movie because the doctor, played by Matt Dillon, sort of apprentices this this young Hawaiian. Definitely mentors. He mentors him, and he eventually becomes a doctor. And so, but going back to the the Dylan, you, I would think they would cast Caviezel as the young doctor, and Dylan as the heavy, this, yeah. this uh, dastardly guy who comes in on. The boy ends up growing up, getting older, not too old, you know, young kid, it's seventeen, eighteen, uh, played by Ryan Potter, and they he's they spark a romance with this. Um, with this carrot with this young lady and and so you have these this tension so i appreciate uh matt dylan's performance jim caviezel's uh i just feel uh, i'll turn it over to you right now but i just feel there aren't the, they don't make movies like this anymore where you have this these lush settings um you know hawaii in this case you know very walk in the clouds feel with, with romance in the background and some history. And you just, these are lives, you know, it's almost like a painting, mm -hmm. you know, uh, there, what was it with Brad Pitt, Legends of the Fall? Mm -hmm. uh, what was the other one with, I know, um, I'm not comparing it, but I'm not saying, you know, these are exact type of movies. Right, but like time periods, like- um, Time period film, romance. A river runs through it. River runs through it type of thing. Uh, so, uh, I, I want to mention one thing. There's a really interesting uh, scene where the young apprentice, right? The doctor, he, he has this crush on this girl and she's injured. And at one point, you know, cause Matt Dillon couldn't be there. That character, he asks her, um, now this is a guy he's crushed. This is the lady he's crushing on. He says, have you had any vomiting or diarrhea? That was one of the questions he had yeah. asked. I thought that was really an unusual scene. Um, and then last thing. There's a moment in, in the, so, you know, there's two boys played, right? The younger version, he's about, mm -hmm. I don't know, seven or eight. And then the older version who's maybe 18, 17, but the younger version, he's, he knows English, but he's, he's very reticent, not talking much, but he definitely knows English and the native language. And Matt Dillon is using the little boy to translate for him, yeah. but he's shortening the verbose Matt Dillon's, you know, speech. He's he's cut into the chase more. And I thought that was very interesting because uh, kids instinctually, not always, but often instinctually know what's important and not important. And as teachers, sometimes we say more than we need to say. There's a lot of interesting scenes um, in this movie, and, and there's a couple more I want to talk about, but uh, yeah. I liked it. Okay, good. I, I did too. And uh, for a lot of the same reasons you did. Uh, there's some things I didn't like, but not, and I'll share those, but there are things that I enjoy. Of course, the time period, it really was shot a um, hundred years after the event, which was just right after the Spanish uh, Spanish flu that really devastated the mainland and Hawaii. And you see the, he, basically the doctor, which is uh, played by, like you said, by, played by Matt Dillon, uh, is going to help. And, and you know that he has this type of, uh, he's a type of person that really wants to give. And although uh, definitely wants to get paid too, but I think as the, as the film goes, you could see that he really grows to be part of that community uh, on the Hawaiian Islands. But this film is, is yes, there's racism, but it's also dealing with a mixed race. A young man um, played by uh, Ryan Potter, his name is Joe, right? The one that you mentioned, uh, who becomes really the son of, of this doctor. Uh, he is mixed race, right? His father was probably white and his mother was uh, Hawaiian. And so you see that both both groups of the white and the, uh, people on, on, on Hawaii are not really warming up to him until he really starts working with the doctor. And, and so that's the story. And of course, the, the title of the film is Running for Grace. So he has this, as you mentioned, he has this crush on this young lady by the name of Grace Danielson, who comes from a, a wealthy family. But then you deal with that racism. The one thing I don't get, Ruben, and maybe you could help me with this, as the film goes on, the Jim Caviezo character is introduced. He's the doctor. Uh, his name is Dr. Reyes. And they seem to be okay with Dr. Reyes. He doesn't look like a Dr. Reyes to me. I felt like it was a little miscast. I did think they could actually could have been switched. Caviza could have played, although it made Dylan 
I don't know, he did a good job as a doctor, but they could have switched parts. Uh, but the name Reyes, I didn't get that. I mean, because Reyes is more Latino, right? Maybe Spanish or, or um, Mexican? That That's what you didn't like about it? No, that's no, it. no. That's not, the only, that's not the only thing. His last I'm name? Saying that was one thing that kind of threw me off. Um, and, and so, and just the, and the casting, that part. And as as the film went on, I mean, I did enjoy the love story because it really becomes a romantic story. Um, I guess part of it, I was thinking, is this really believable? I don't know. Um, I don't think it's based on a true story. I know the person who directed it is by name is uh, uh, his last name. Is it Adam Dick? Uh, no, no. Uh, David Cunningham directed it. I oh, mentioned David Cunningham it. directed this one. Yeah, I'm sorry. I mentioned, David I mentioned that. Already. That's right. You did. I, I apologize. But yeah, so I don't know, um, you know, and this is right before pandemic and so forth. But I did love the visuals. I did love the background. And overall, yes, I give it my recommendation. I enjoyed the film. There's a couple of little things, like I said, I didn't like. But overall, I enjoyed the film. A couple of thoughts mm -hmm. uh, off the bat. Uh, my issue with the film, it is, it's a small one, but it, it's, it's something that I alluded to or mentioned earlier, is that it's material that we've seen before, perhaps, but in, in different, you know, like I remember the movie Black Robe, um, Bruce Beresford, I think, directed it. There, there's there's similar types of movies that deal with this this uh, mixing of cultures and and the racism and bias that's inherent. So those are familiar tropes we've seen. I I, I recognize that. So that's my criticism of it. It's like oh we've seen it. However, uh, I can't deny the power of the scenes and the performances. That's why I recommend it, you know, personally. So I, I, I'm kind of with you where I see uh, the flaws. Now, I, I'm not with you in the sense that uh, what I was mentioning about the about the casting of yeah. Cabezal and Dylan, I was saying, I get why somebody would would look at this, at this material and say, oh, Cabezal, come on. He's the doctor. Yeah. Dylan's the bad guy. I was pleasantly surprised. And by the way, let's just talk about Matt Dillon in general. He needs he needs way more casting parts that, that he's gotten. I don't know what the deal is. I remember when I was a kid, he was the biggest thing. Yeah. If you were to ask me as a 13-year-old boy what my favorite films were, immediately I would say Outsiders and Rumblefish. Matt Dillon, my favorite actor. Like mm -hmm. he was, he was it. So I was happy to see him perform this. To me, I was not out of it at all. I thought he brought it and Caviezel brought it. But, you know, but we disagree on that. And I, I understand what you mean. Maybe, I guess what you're saying, Caviezel would have done a more credible job, maybe? Oh, no, this is what I'm trying to say. I think Dylan did a great job. Um, I think in the beginning, I thought, oh, Caviezel could have played uh, the Dylan part. But I didn't like the Caviezel in the, in the part he played. That's it. That's what, I'm not saying Dylan did poor job. He did great. I agree with you. He was wonderful. And I, 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 I too want to see him in more things. But Caviezel, I don't know. I just didn't buy it. He just seemed like, I guess maybe because I know I've seen all his other parts and just seem as a bad guy like that. It just it just didn't play right to me. But but again, maybe that's his acting. And he, uh, he definitely played a pretty devious dude and a pretty evil dude. Okay. Uh, little perhaps dis disagreements on the casting issues, but overall we liked it and um, check it out everybody and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.